boys, welcome to episode four. In this episode, we're gonna be making the oil pump. So uh, I've got these materials here that I've sourced. I've got a drawing. So all we need to do is blue this up, mark it out, and get into it. The first editions of this engine didn't have an oil pump at all. They just relied on splash feed. So this oil pump, which is down on the lower left here, is um, like a welcome addition, I would say, for reliability. There's three shafts in the oil pump. This being number one, this is the actual drive shaft for it. it it's driven off the crankshaft. So we've got that fellow sorted and uh, we're raring to go. The other two shafts, I'm going to use these um, valves, these old valves, because they've got a good hardened shaft and it'll wear well. Um, I want to make sure that the bore that they run in is super tight and super straight. So what I've come up with is I cut one of the valves down, so I've just got the shaft, and I've ground a drill bit onto the end of it. I suppose you'd call that like a spade bit. And because it's exactly the same size, and it doesn't have any flutes or anything. As it goes in, it sort of reams its way through the material and creates a, a really good, tight hole that's polished and everything. So I'll just hold this up to the lens. And I don't know if you can see that, but that hole is super straight and super polished with a really tight clearance. So when the valve goes in there, it just slides in and rotates perfectly and there's no lateral movement whatsoever. So that's the method of keeping all the, the shafts in line and basically oil tight. So here's a spade bit in action. Um, gives us a really nice tight fit and the cushion of air just pushes the shaft straight back out. This is probably one of the most challenging parts I've had to build so far. There's just so many operations involved in this part alone. I would have had it in and out of vices and chucks and rotary tables and stuff for probably over a hundred operations, I think. Um, as you can see, there's all manner of procedures to be carried out and um, yeah, quite uh, a challenge to put it all together. Part of the challenge is uh, as you clamp this part and whittle it away, you become, it becomes harder and harder to clamp it. So you uh, constantly working out which operation to do along the way. So we're finally starting to take a bit of shape on here and um, with a bit more machining and a file job and some scotch bright, we've come up with the result. Out of this block, I made the three inspection caps that I need to uh, plug all the holes in the housing. So uh, a little bit of work in the lathe and the mill and we've got three caps. So this is something I've never tried before. This is my first attempt at making a worm gear. So I've got a tap spinning in the mill and I just offer the work up to it. And as it comes into contact, it just starts rotating the work all of its own accord. And it just, it eventually finds its own center and you just keep cutting in deeper and deeper. I've gone in about 2.1 mils here and uh, forms a perfectly good uh, worm gear at the end of it. So I had a little bit of a distraction here. I um, 
needed to turn a metric thread on my imperial lathe and I didn't have the correct change gear so I got this 55 tooth gear and uh, turned it down and then made a 50 tooth gear out of it. Nothing's ever easy. I decided to make the plumbing fittings out of brass because they uh, wear better than aluminium and I can always nickel plate them at a later stage. This is a bit of a uh, guitar string getting wound around a rod to make uh, springs for the check valves. So here we are, 34 individual pieces all machined up and ready to assemble. So let's see if we can put it together. Here's our main housing. Um, this is our worm gear. Goes in there like so. Fits in there, rotates around. And we've got our little cross gear, cross arrangement. It's riding on a cushion of air in there, it's a bit hard to get it to locate. Our shaft goes in. that far then we get this piece it's nice and firm and tightens up in exactly the right spot and our shaft goes in there. Then we get a check ball, put it down there. One of our little guitar string springs, put it in there and our little stopper. Another check ball goes in here, another spring that locates on top of there, then we have this little bit here that goes, screws all that, holds that check ball in. Okay, now for an adjustment, we put the worm gear all the way up to the top, up to here. Screw that in, that tightens down on there. So, as the shaft rotates, it goes up and down. So every 82 crankshaft revolutions of the engine, this goes up and down once and delivers a very small amount of oil each time to the crankcase. So now we're in a spot where we just put our inspection caps on. Just 
put these little fellas in here. These are our oil pipes. These need to be soldered onto oil pipes to the, from the oil tank and up to the uh, engine crankcase, but uh, that'll be done at a later stage. And then that just goes on like so. And then we have this little screw, which screws in here. That's a little bleed screw. It's a bit hard to get that started, but we'll just give it a go. I've got a special screwdriver for that one. Just holds this on nicely. Screw him in there. And then we have our screws. They all hold it to the crankcase. And uh, then we put the gasket on. Get our pump. Do them all up. Get out with the camera in the way. And that's starting to resemble the finished article. Keep on machining. Man.